Welcome, my millions of subscribers. Um, we were talking about limits. We yesterday we learned what a limit is, and today we're gonna uh, keep learning what a limit is. So, I think yesterday I forgot to say that we're in section two point two of the book. <clears throat> And right now, I'm going to talk about uh, one-sided limits. Anyone there? Am I here? Am I by myself? We're here. All right. Thank you, Pascal. OK, so. Here's an example. So here's a function. It's a function that is zero if x is negative, and it's one. It's one if x is positive or zero. Um, so. What did I write here? Is this a fun I said it's a function, but is it actually a function? Uh, well, yes. Pretty sure if you give me a number, I can give you an answer. I can give you only one answer, which is what makes it a function. If you tell me seven, I tell you, well, it's positive. So uh, if you say what's f of seven, I look in here and I say, well, the answer is one. If you ask me 1700, I say, well, it's positive, so I look in here, and the answer is 1. If you ask me for f of negative 3, I look in here, and I get 0. So, I mean, it doesn't have a formula. It has two formulas. Um, but it's still a function. It's still a rule that gives me a number for every number I give it. So I can ask what its limit is. I can, I can do things like drawing its graph. What does its graph look like? Well, um, let me take, for example, one, two, three, zero. Uh, well, what's f of zero? Uh, zero is bigger than or equal to zero. So the value is one. So I'm drawing the point zero, one. One is also positive. so the height of the graph there is also 1. 2 is also positive, so f of 2 is 1. So for all the positive numbers, the function uh, takes the value 1. For all the negative numbers, it takes the value 0. So the negative 1, I go through 0, negative 2, height 0, height 0, height 0. And that is going to be another horizontal line that, uh, well, at 0, the graph is at height um, one. So we like to draw like an empty circle to remind ourselves that there's no, um, that there's nothing there at the origin because um, the function goes through zero uh, comma one. If, if I drew a point here as well, this would stop being a function because it would stop passing the vertical line test. Uh, because the, this line would cross the graph twice. And we know the graph of a function uh, has no vertical line that touches it twice, even if it's just one vertical line. <laughs> okay, so that is, um, so that's what this function is. It's called the heaviside function. I don't know why this silly function has a name. I don't know what Heaviside did to, um, to deserve this, but I mean, he probably did something incredible, right? People, people only get their names on things for doing incredible things. Um, I think, I don't know, I think if you learn some things in engineering, you, you see that people talk about this function, but I don't know why. Um, so uh, the question I have is, what is the limit of 
of this function at x equals zero. So, um, well, <clears throat> I mean, the only thing we know about limits is what they are, and we barely know that. So, the only thing we can kind of do is guess, I guess. Um, so, uh, what I was doing yesterday, you know, drawing a table of values of x approaching approaching zero and seeing uh, what I get, something like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 1 over 234, 2,340, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.02. So this function uh, is pretty, I mean, pretty easy to compute for all the positive numbers, it gives me a one, for all the negative numbers, it gives me a zero. So if you look at these numbers and you go, what are these numbers approaching? And what's the answer? Come on. Limited, uh, it does not exist. Right, it's approaching nothing exactly, Miles. Um, so, this limit uh, does not exist. Does not exist. Um, this is calculus, a third of this class is limits half of the limits we try to do do not exist. So we get tired of writing does not exist. So um, we end up abbreviating it to DNE. But I mean, DNE is just short for this thing does not exist. Don't think DNE is a number or anything like that. Uh, so, I mean, that's the answer. The thing is, um, the thing is we can still say something because even though one and zero, um, a bunch of ones and a bunch of zeros do not approach anything. Um, we can still say something clearly. I mean, some of these numbers are approaching one, some are approaching zero. Right, what Miles is saying. Uh, so when I, when I take, um, if I only look at negative numbers, if I only look at negative numbers, at x uh, negative, we have um, f of x approaching, approaching zero. And likewise, if I only look at positive numbers, f of x seems to approach, um, I mean, by approach, in this case, um, it's, um, it's, I mean, it, it's getting close to zero in that it's already always zero, but how could you be, how can you be more, how can you be closer to zero than being already zero or already one? So what we say uh, is that the limit of f of x and we write a minus sign here um, is uh, zero. So this is red. The limit um, yeah. so either you would say the left hand limit and limit of f as X approaches zero, and then if you, you could say also the limit um, as X if approaches zero from the left is zero, uh, and likewise you would say uh, that the limit from the right is one.
so that's that's it um so a uh, uh, limit from one side um i mean it's exactly the same thing as a limit except uh, for a limit, we let uh, x approach a particular point from both sides. From for a one one-sided limit, we only let it approach from values either bigger or smaller. So let's write that down. So we say the left hand limit of um, F as X approaches A is L. If I can make F of X as close to L as I want by making X as close to A as I want, but always smaller than A. And now, uh, what's the right hand limit? Well, it's the same thing, except uh, you make it bigger and not smaller. So the right hand limit is um is the is a number to which i can make f very close if i make x uh, very close to the target but bigger and that's it that's what the right hand limit is um of course in a it's it is um probably easier to tell, tell in a picture in a picture um if I show you this graph and I ask you what is the limit of um, what is the limit of this function as x tends to zero from the right, what you are supposed to do in your head is basically go like this and forget everything that is not on the right hand of hope I can do that of x equals zero and see where the height is approaching. Can I do that? So the height here it approaches uh, the limit as x goes to zero from the right of f of x, and the height here approaches the limit from the left. And notice that both limits, um, it doesn't matter at all what's happening exactly at zero. This is also called jump discontinuity. Well, what, what is happening here is called a jump discontinuity, but I'm, I'm gonna get there eventually. I didn't, I should say what continuous is before I talk about how you can be discontinuous. <clears throat> But uh, what I'm talking about here, I mean, you can, if you have never heard this word, you can probably guess that the fact that this function is jumping is the thing we call a jump. But um, the limit, I mean, the limit is just a, a number that we compute, or maybe it doesn't exist. Um, this, even, you know, whether this was, we, get, we also compute the limit here from the right and from the left. Here would happen to be the same, it would happen to be one. Um, it's related to being continuous, uh, but doesn't mean you, I mean, isn't, they're not the same thing. Okay, so let's do another example. So let's see how well I can draw. So say we have 
um, this function. Yeah. Okay, so this is a graph of some function. How do you know there's some function with this graph? Well, um, it passes a vertical line test. For this line only has one point. It's this one. So, any anything that passes a vertical line test is automatically the graph of a function. So one-sided limits are just limits. We practically split into two uh, with the plus and the minus. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all there is there. I mean, they're the same. Other than that, they're the same. Um, they're just a useful thing to keep around. OK, so I'm going to ask you all these questions. What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? What is the... So sometimes the, the limit I was talking about yesterday, we call the two-sided limit. Um, and the same for x approaching 3. So think about it because I'm about to ask you. <clears throat> okay, I said I was about to ask you. Now I'm asking you. So what is the limit of of this function as x approaches two from the left? Or at least, what does it look like in my drawing? Um, Sam says one. Does anyone agree or disagree with this? Two. Sam change. Um, change minds. Does anyone other than Sam agree or disagree? I don't get how I'm supposed to read that. So I just looked at the letter two. Well, that's what we're trying to see. Shelby, you were saying something. Um, I agree that it would be one. You agree that it would be one. Yes. Let us say how you know that. Um, when you look at the graph from the left hand side as it approaches two, um, it's at one. Right, so what we're supposed to do, exactly, that's exactly it. So we're supposed to see what happens. So we look at x equals two, and we're supposed to look at what's happening on the left. So on the left means that everything that happens at two, everything that happens to the right of two, you can you can just ignore. Um, so we're just we're looking at what's happening here, and then you try to see as as the the x coordinate approaches two, that is as I move to the right, I'm approaching two from the left. Uh, where the height of this function is going, because the y coordinate is uh, the value of the function. And you can see, I mean, it's approaching this point over here, and its height is, looks like it's one. So, um, so that's it. The limit from the left is uh, one. Um, so what's an example of if it didn't exist from the That's limit? Been, uh, great approach. question. Let me, let me finish this problem and then I'll give you an example because I really like the question. Okay, so um, um, all right, so what's the limit as we approach from the right? Someone who's not Sam or Shelly. It's three. Everyone agrees? Mm. 
no, yes, no, oh, interest, oh, oh, this is, this is what I wanted. Yes, no, um, probably arrow pointing up, two, three, 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 wouldn't it be one, yep, two, two, okay, uh, slight edge on the twos there. Let's see, and so I'm still looking at x equals two, but now instead I'm approaching from the right instead of from the left. So what I said is you can take everything that's from the left of two of x equals two, so all of this stuff, and this is what you can ignore. So you can ignore the thing that's happening exactly at two because we're, we care about what happens here as we approach two. But, I mean, that's just what a limit is. Uh, when we do a limit, we ignore what's happening at exactly the point because we don't care. Um, so we're supposed to um, start somewhere over here and go to the right until we get very close to two and see where the graph is pointing, uh, pointing, approaching, it's pointing towards clearly this point, which has height y equals two. So the answer is two. So what the ones, the people saying three are getting at is that f of two is three. Uh, when I look exactly at x equals two, what a mess. At x equals two, if I wanted to know the value of the function, I would look at the one point with x coordinate two and look at its y coordinate and say it's three. And that tells me that f of two is three. But the thing is, this point that's floating around here, I could have drawn anywhere I liked. It wouldn't change the um, it wouldn't change the limit at all. So Matthew says that the limit of the function is three, and Miles said it doesn't exist. And I'm going to agree with Miles. This doesn't exist um, because um, I I mean. As I approach, as I approach uh, to the the values of f could be approaching one or it could be approaching two. For example, what if I decide to approach it by picking a point here, then a point here, then a point here, and I start jumping? I feel like if I'm jumping from side to side but still getting closer on both sides, um, that that counts that counts as approaching two. But the values would be jumping um, uh, from one to two, basically. So it's not really approaching anything. Would it be three if it wasn't a full circle? If it wasn't, you mean if it was like this? Uh, so, so, I mean, it wouldn't be, f of two would not exist because if I try to find now the point with x coordinate two, there's no points with x coordinate two. But I could still do the limits, even though there's no, because I don't need there to be anything. Uh, so. Okay, so open circle means that for limits, they still exist. Open circle means there's nothing there in the graph. Um, is, is what we mean when we write an open circle, because otherwise it's hard to, tell if the segment has endpoints or not. So this circle is the point two, two, and by open, we mean that it's not in the graph. This is just how we write things. And here, you know, I drew, I drew a point, this is in the graph. So like I said, if I wanted to look for f of two, I would need to look at the one point that has x coordinate equals to two that is in the graph. Uh, is it this one? No, because that one I just said is not in the graph. It's the one, it's this one. So f of two is three. Um, so if it is just a point, then it doesn't exist. 
you mean if the graph was just a point? If the graph was just a point, the limit, yeah, I would say you can't even compute it. Um, okay, so let's see if we've understood, oh, there's so much stuff in this slide. Let's see if we, so what is the, what is the next one? What is the limit uh, of F as X approaches three from the left? It's one, yeah, it's one. Um, I'm supposed to ignore what's happening to the right of three, which I mean, there's nothing there already. So I don't care that there's nothing there. Um, and I see that the graph is approaching this point and that point has Y coordinate um, one. So uh, the limit is one. Now this has to do with, um, Dustin's question, if it's just a point, then the limit doesn't exist. What happens to the limit as X approaches three from the right? I'm gonna tell you. I try to approach um, three from the right. There's no graph there, there's nothing. Um, so there's nothing, nothing to do. Um, so this limit does not exist. The function isn't even defined. If F is not defined, how am I even going to compute the limit? And finally, the limit as X equals three. Um, this could be controversial, but um, the, the book would tell you that if you, if you can't approach from both sides, you can't compute the limit. So we would say the limit doesn't exist. So Another reason one sided limits are useful is for when you have a function, when you have an endpoint of a graph, you can't talk about the limit um, because you can't approach from both sides, but you can talk about the one sided limit. And this is still an interesting thing to talk about. Uh, and finally, what is f of three? f of three is f of three zero. Um, I drew, so the point zero three, I try to fill it in here, f, f three, uh, three zero. So this is the one point with x coordinate equal to three that is in the graph. So f of three is zero. Okay, there you go. Awesome, so uh, we've learned a bunch of things right now. Let me recap. Um, so one thing we've just realized is um, the limit doesn't care at all what happens at the point. What was that zero? That's a good question. Why was that zero if it wasn't being approached from both sides? Because the the value of a function has nothing to do with the function of, with how you approach the point. The value of a function is just what happens exactly at that point. Uh, what happens at three is that I have a point at height zero. If the, if the graph was just a point, if the graph was just this one, and this is the point one, two, I would still say F of one is two. I wouldn't say anything about the limits, but F of one is two. Um, and this is the same, whether I draw some stuff here or here, or I don't draw it. F of one is just always two because the point one, two is in the graph and that's all I care about. So, so that's why. Um, so when I'm saying that the limit doesn't care about what happens at the point, I mean, even, even if the function is not defined,
So, um, so if I draw, let's see, uh, let's try to draw this one. So if I have a function like this, you copy and paste. No, can I? There's no selection here on, on Jamboard. Okay, I'm gonna try to draw three identical things and you take my word for it. So, um, say I go, uh, say this is one, th these are all supposed to be the same graph, but now this one is gonna be not defined. So here f of one does not exist. Here, um, I'm gonna do an open circle. Oh, great. Close the program, open the program, find the slide. Uh, so here I'm gonna draw an open circle and maybe I'm gonna draw the, the value here. So these functions are all exactly the same except at the point f equal one. Um, so what's happening here is that I'm changing just what happens at one. So the limit is the same. Because for each of these to compute the limit, I would look at what happens when I approach over here on, on both sides. I mean, it's true for the one-sided limits as well. And I would see I'm approaching the same point. It doesn't matter if I'm approaching a point that's in the graph or not. One was approaching two and the other was approaching three. Oh, there's a conversation. Better if you turn your microphone on. I'm doing my best to read the chat, but it's pretty hard to keep up. Why well, wasn't the limit of two a number instead of does not exist? Um, well, the reason is that if I was approaching from the left and from the right, I was getting different answers. And that means that if I was, you know, if I decided to approach, which the thing is the limit should be the same no matter how I approach the x equals two. So if I approach from, if I go from here to here and back and back and back, then the value of f keeps jumping. It's not approaching anything. It's approaching sort of one and two at the same time. That's no good. So if these are basically, these are not equal, the limit does not exist. Um, Wait, so, okay. So the limit of f of x as x approaches three does not exist, but f of three is equal to zero. Yeah, so the limit. Okay, that's so, what I was getting confused because I thought everyone was saying that the limit of f of x as x approach, approaches three is zero. And then I got confused because the limit of f, like f of x as x approaches two is do not exist. So then I got confused. I okay. Okay, I mean I wrote. I think I wrote here the correct answers. So we would say basically this one does not exist because this one does not exist. If I can't approach three, then I'm not even gonna. I, I don't even try to compute the limit. So just because there's nothing to the right. Okay. Are there more questions? I'm I'm still really confused on the whole uh, uh, x approaches two from the right and why that equals two. Uh, well, I'm 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 looking. So here's x equals two. Uh, and so the points that are closed from the right are these ones over here, and I'm supposed to be moving left towards two. So on the graph, I'm I'm on this part of the graph. Uh, so if I'm on this part of the graph moving in this direction, I'm approaching this point in the graph. 
this is where this line, this is the endpoint of the, this line that I drew, right? Okay, that makes a little more so, sense. So then the limit is going to be the y coordinate of of this point, no matter what is actually happening at that point, so no matter whether there's graph or there's no graph in there. Okay. Um, so, um, so I was saying, um, let's say, let's just put a point here. Let's say this is two. So for all of these, the limit is two. Uh, and this is the same for the, the limit from the left, from the right, uh, because to see to see what the limit is, I, I look at the x values that are close to one from the left or from the right, and I look at what happens on the graph, and the graph approaches this height of two. And what I approach um, is completely independent of what is happening because I'm never actually looking at x equals two. The limit just doesn't look at uh, x, sorry, x equals one. When you do the limit, you're looking at things that are as close to one as you want, but just never one. Uh, and what and the reason we do this is just that um, it's just that if I wanted to talk about what happens exactly at one, I already have a, a word for that. It's called f of one. So I'm not going to invent a new word to call f of one. F of one is different for all three. I mean, um, here f of one does not exist. Here, f of one is two. It happens to be equal to the limit. Here, f of one is one. It's not equal to a limit, and it doesn't matter at all. So, the is second y f of one uh, equal to one. What's that? Wait, what? So, why is f of one equal to one? No, no. Just, just say. Let's just pretend that this is height one. Okay. It depends on what I decide to label things are as. It's just not the same as the one above. It's just clearly not two. All right. Thanks for all the questions. I feel like we're learning today. Um, so uh, next thing, this is even more important. Um, so a thing that I've sort of been hinting at a lot. Um, so um, another thing about limits. Um, for a limit to exist, um, say uh, a limit exists uh, if and only if three things happen. Um, the left hand limit has to exist, the right hand limit has to exist. And don't they have to be the same? Or yeah, exactly. Um, so that's three things. One has to exist, the other has to exist, and they have to equal each other. That's the third thing. Um, but so the exact same thing in a formula is that I'm saying the limit of a function equals some number L um, in math we like saying if and only if um, I'm going to say if and only if all of these uh, hold. So what needs to happen is that um, this exists, the right limit exists, and they have to equal each other, uh, right, left, and the equal each other. And 
and then they would be equal to this limit. So when I say if and only if, uh, what, do I, what do I mean? Um, when mathematicians say if and only if, they mean that if this is true, then all of these are true. And if these are true, then all of these are true. So either they're both true or they're both false. So what does this mean? Well, if the limit exists, it means that necessarily one limit has to exist, the other exists, and they're equal to each other. And it also, um, well, it means that if the limit doesn't exist, then one of these don't work. But it also means that if both limits exist, but then they don't equal each other, the limit doesn't exist. If one limit exists um, and uh, the other doesn't, then the limit does not exist. If neither limit on either side exists, then the limit does not exist. Right? If you have one thing and another, um, they have to um, they're um, to be for for one thing and another to be true, it means they're both true. If I say, my name is Moises, and you're all getting A's this semester, uh, deciding right now, that would be false, because even though I didn't lie about my name, I lied about giving you all A's. Um, I mean, unless, unless you really all deserve them. Um, so, um, uh, I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna do some examples. So one thing, um, one thing that's important here is that notice, like I was saying, there's no mention of f of a anywhere. F of a could exist. It could not exist. Um, it could be equal to the limit. It could be equal to one of them. Doesn't matter. The answer to whether a limit exists is completely independent of that. So, um, so say we have A here. So, so this is a function. Um, so here, um, the limit at, of the, from the right exists, sorry, from the left. And, and they're both equal. So the limit exists. All three things are true, so the limit exists. Um, so another example. So now what can go wrong for uh, a limit to not exist. So if you if you have a function like this, um, say from one side it looks like this and from the other it just starts oscillating like crazy, like the one I drew before. Here the limit of the limit from the left exists. The limit from the right does not exist. Um, so they can't be equal if one of them does not exist. So, okay, I said the three things have to be true. Uh, only one of them is true, so, um, so the limit does not exist because all of them have to work. Um, So uh, another thing that could happen is what I was showing you before. The limit as x approaches a from the left exists. This the limit as we approach from the right exists. So they both exist. That's good. That's what we need to have a limit, but they are not equal. Um, so the limit from the left is the height of this point. The limit from the right is the height of this point. 
um, and I drew them, they don't look the same at all, they're not the same. So I needed all three things to be true, the third one is false. So the limit of the limit of x uh, of f as x approaches a does not exist either. <clears throat> and notice that here I didn't bother. I didn't bother drawing empty circles, uh, filled in circles. And the reason for that is that it doesn't matter at all. Uh, what happens exactly at this point is completely completely irrelevant. The function could be here, it could be here, it could be, it could be here. It just doesn't matter. Uh, because uh, no matter what the function is, it's still true that um, whatever I say about the limit doesn't change at all. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Okay, um, trying to get on it. Well, you start to understand it when, once you do the homework. Um, the, you're just like listening to me ramble. It's not, that's not how you learn things. You learn things when you try to see if a limit exists by yourself. Um, okay, so maybe, maybe I'll start with uh, the next thing. And tomorrow uh, I'll go from there. So, um, so the next topic, still in section two point two, is infinite limits. Six. Um, so, what is an so the example I want to look at here? is um, the limit as x approaches zero of one over x squared, for example. So, uh, so what happens? Um, let's do the, um, the table thing. This is the only thing I, I have right now. So what's, um, what's f of 0 0.1? Oof, arithmetic. Oof. One divided by zero point one squared. No one's even like using a calculator to solve the stage today. Uh, zero point one is one tenth. So this is one, well, this is the square of one over one ten. Um, this is 10 squared. The denominator of the denominator is the numerator. Oh, 100, there you go, thank you. So this is 100. Uh, if I make x equals to 0 0.01, uh, here I get 10,000. If I make x equals one over, 2400. Oh, I don't remember. 576,000. So these numbers, if I do a negative number, it's this is symmetric. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these numbers are not approaching any number, but something is happening. Uh, what is happening with these numbers? Come on, approaching infinity. Uh, I don't know what that means yet. Um, that's what I'm supposed to get at. What's happening is they're getting bigger and numbers that get bigger and bigger without any bound um, are not approaching anything, but we do like to say that they're approaching infinity. Okay, so tomorrow we talk about what it means to have an infinite limit. And that's it for today. Have a great day.
as always, I'm here uh, if you want to ask questions.